Okay, welcome to the marketing panel. Hopefully today we can uh, share some experiences and teach you some things, uh, and uh, and also share uh, you you have a, you know some experiences that you've had. Marketing is very important. It's uh, always been important, but I think now it's more important than ever, especially in the book business with all the competition that's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, the the panel here. Uh, we have with us on my right is Reed Lance Rosenthal. He's a number one best-selling author and winner of eight national awards. Uh, he's cowboy at heart and poet's pen. And po excuse me, his cowboy heart and poet's pen capture the spirit of the Western landscape and its influence on generations of settlers. His long-standing devotion to wild and remote places and to the people, both past and present who leave their legend and footprint upon America and American West, is the inspiration and descriptive underpinning of all his writing. We also have with us on my left, David Morell, the award-winning author of First Blood, the novel in which Rambo was created, holds a doctorate in American literature from Pennsylvania State University, and was a professor at the University of Iowa. Go Hawkeyes, right? Okay. <laughs> his historical Western, Last Reveille, is about blackjack, Pershing's punished, uh, Punitive Expedition in Search of Pancho Villa. And I am Stephen Anderson Law. Do we have somebody else? Oh, oh no, I, hi, Jim. I'm the man with no name. Oh, no, this is, this is uh, Jim Franco. How are you doing? I didn't know you were on the panel. They didn't tell me. Oh, well, okay. Well, why don't you introduce yourself? Hand him the mic, because and, and, uh, I don't have a bio on you. Again, I'm Stephen Anderson Law. I just finished a, uh, a tour, a big one, after a release of my book from uh, Berkeley Books, uh, one of the last few Western publishers uh, in New York. And it was a very successful tour, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about how uh, I arranged all that and accomplished uh, the success that I did, which earned me a contract for more. So um, again, I, I took it into my own hands. It was something I had to do, because the publisher is not going to do it for you. I don't care who your publisher is. Uh, you, you really need to you know, take the bull by the horns and, and do your own marketing. Uh, before the self-publishing re uh, revolution, there was, um, Jim might help me with this too, there was about 200,000 plus books in print a year. Uh, now there's over 8 million. Distribution has changed widely. Barnes & Noble and other bricks and mortar bookstores uh, used to lead the sales ranking. The leader is now Jim Franco's favorite, Amazon.com. I can sum up the state of book business by quoting an elderly woman who at uh, one of my book signings uh, was passing back and forth and she finally made a stop after making several passes and leaned into me and said, a lot of people writing books these days. <laughs> there are a lot more dogs fighting over the same bone. The amount of people reading hasn't grown all that much, if any at all, in certain genres, but competition among writers has grown exponentially. There is not near the glamour in being a published writer. I mean, gosh, if this would have happened in the 70s, you know, where we had all those Louis L'Amour books, you know, standing by, you know, gosh, it would have been a, a major, major accomplishment. But everybody is writing books these days. And because of the way the systems are set up, anybody can really do it if they want to. So because of online book selling and ebooks, authors are no longer competing for shelf space at bookstores. But figuring out how to get readers to that page on Amazon.com, it's more of an even playing field. We now have the same shelf space as Stephen King. But how do we do it? The target is the same. We're audience building. We don't just rely on social media, which is powerful but also on face-to-face -face meetings with the potential audience. My advice is to think non-traditional. Bookstores may not be the best place to do book signings. If you haven't noticed, a lot of bookstores are closing. We don't have borders anymore. And again, Amazon.com is the number one bookseller. So you can't do events at their store. So you have to look for high traffic areas, look like grocery stores, shopping malls, craft fairs, or area festivals. 
I recently spent three weeks in Arizona and took place in 32 book signing events from Mesa, Phoenix area, all the way down to Yuma and some in Tucson. The best event that I had where I sold over a case of books, which, you know, when you get them from in mass market, they're usually about 48 in a case. I sold 56 books, signed them, 56 books. It was a craft fair. A lot of you lovely ladies running around with your craft ideas. But I was there. When I got to the table, there was this little sign waiting for me. It said, book man. <laughs> so think non-traditional. Bookstores, I mean, how many of you here have done a signing at a bookstore where, huh, you kind of the ho-hum, you know, Lauren just told us about one in Dallas. You know, they're not always the best place. Go where there's a lot of traffic, and, and there's a lot of ideas out there. I decided to do my tour at a grocery store chain. When my book came out November 1st last year, I had spent a year planning this tour with a grocery store chain. I did 80 signings in seven weeks with this, book store, with this grocery store chain. It was phenomenal. The number of books... It was called hy V. It's in the upper Midwest. Uh, they have over 300 stores. Uh, they're mostly in Iowa. But hy V, yes. But uh, a lot, they, they had, now I, I got to tell you that what got me in was my book through Berkeley because it was already going to be on their shelf. They have a book stand and they, and they have westerns. And it was nice to see that they carry the, the uh, traditional western releases. Okay? So that helped me get in. But there are other places. Uh, I know hy V will support local authors. If you are, lived in Kansas City, they have, I think, 14 stores. They will, they will let you do signings, let you come back once a month. They're really supportive of those kind of things. But wherever you live, think in the same line. You know, there's a lot of people that go grocery shopping. Everybody eats. So more people didn't go into uh, Barnes & Noble. Think, think also about the, the uh, ask them, when is your uh, peak traffic time? What's the best time that we could come into your store and benefit from your traffic? They may say, well, it's this time, but we don't want you in here. So be prepared for that. But, the, you know, there, but you just have to, you have to think outside of what we've been doing. Don't think about the traditional way we've been doing things because everything has changed. For those that don't buy a book, try to send them away with something. And I still believe, and, and you might have other ideas, but I still believe the best thing is a bookmark. Now, okay, so what if somebody reads on a Kindle? Doesn't matter. This has the information on how they can get the book on Kindle. And one step better, I had these printed before I knew what they were, but they're called a QR code. Does anybody n not know what a QR code is? Okay. No idea. Okay, well, that's good, because I'm going to tell you. They're on the back. You, you actually find them in Roundup Magazine. There's one on the very back inside cover for Wild West. You take, what happens is people see these on a poster, on a cup, at a convenience store, banana stickers. Here's a goat milk soap. <laughs> I, I, every, every time someone handed me, I see these QR codes. I grabbed one just so I could show that they're being used everywhere. And you'll probably start noticing more often now. How they work is you take your smartphone and you, you download the app for a QR reader. Okay, and you just hold it over it. All you have to do is hold it over it once you press that app, and it scans it, and it takes you right to the website. So the one that I'm doing now it goes to my website. And, re and the reason that it's so powerful is because it gets the attention now. I mean, we're, we're competing for attention spans. Yes, Jim? Yeah. Well, um, I'll get to that in just a second, okay? But... When you've grabbed their attention and they go, they immediately pull their smartphone out and they take the picture and they go to their website on their phone, then you've got their attention immediately because they might forget about it if they just read your website address and they go home, they may have forgot what it was. They didn't write it down or they didn't capture it some way. Now, some people like to take pictures of things because their phones have all the cameras on them and then they, they have that image captured. But this is a quick and easy way and it's, it's really popular right now. It's being used quite a bit. There is a, it's free. You can, there's a lot of generators on, uh, online that you can find. Just Google QR image generator, and you'll find an application that makes them. And then it puts it in like a JPEG or some kind of format that you can put on whatever you're printing. So it, when you create it, when that, that generator, that's really all you do is you type in your URL, which is the website address. 
you type that in, and then it, and you click generate. That's what I've got. It's just two steps. You type that in, you click generate, and then all of a sudden this image pops up, and you save it to your computer, and then you can put that on any of your printed material. If you have somebody else print for you, to send it to them, or if you design it yourself, whichever. You can put it right in a Word document. So make sure all your printed material has them. That's, that's the best advice I can give you right now when you're planning your events. Well, I'm sorry. Yes? Well, you don't need it on email. You don't need it on email. You give them their, on an email, you can put your website address and click on it. This is for printed material. That's a good question, because that's what it's for. It's not for anything electronic. It's for printed material. That's where you see them, It's tangible items. The one that said you didn't, that I lost him? Uh, Lee, do you have a cell phone? Yes. Is it a smartphone or a dumb phone? Okay, okay. I make phone calls all the time. Well, okay. <laughs> that, that's, then, then you're not going to be able to do this um, unless you, but you can still have, you can, you can write it down and mention it to anybody that does your printed material. If you have postcards or anything like that made, uh, you can tell them about it. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people that have smartphones around that can show you. I'd be glad to show you later, you know, how it works. It's, it's pretty simple and, it, and it's very, very powerful. Oh, gosh. Well, ask them why they asked you. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you, maybe you can. That's one thing we all can do. Okay. Now, I can't, you know, hand this over without talking about my work with social media. Um, and again, it's very powerful. It's not the only thing you should do, but it is very powerful. Uh, Facebook and the Facebook business page, uh, I still think, are the best. Twitter has... Um, is, is Twitter is headline news. It's that short little catchy whatever you can do. But, um, and I'm, I'm as guilty as the next by, guy, but you really shouldn't talk so much about yourself and what you're promoting as you are just being an interesting person. You know, I get more responses when I, when I talk about uh, you know, problems with you know, air travel than I do with uh, you know, trying to promote my book or plan an event. But you know, the worst critics are the ones in this room because we're all competing. And so your fans are the ones that are giving you feedback on what's working. So, you know, uh, just remember that um, I, I think that blogs are the number one thing to be interesting with. Because you can actually, and, and of course, uh, has anybody ever heard of John Green? Okay, young adult writer. Before his book was published, I believe it was Viking was the publisher. Uh, he was number one of all books on Amazon before it was published because of his blogging and it's not just blogging it's vlogging video blogs he creates these little three-minute videos of himself just rattling off about anything under the sun I think it's nerds unite or something like that's his deal so it's not in our genre but it's still it, it, it's it's interesting what he's doing he has over two million Twitter followers because of these uh, video blogs that he does so if you've got the uh, um, well, we, you know, the personality like Reed has here, he likes to get in front of a camera, he's got a nice smile, he's got a good voice. You know, get yourself on video and, and, uh, and, and just talk and do your, if you do like a column or a blog, just, just record it on video, read it. You know, recite it, memorize it. Those are, those are some things, that's what he does. And that's how he became so popular and so successful. Uh, and, and link them with your, your Facebook and Twitter. Link them directly. Um, Facebook groups, anybody ever get added to a group without your permission yeah. and, and, and are you annoyed by it yeah. okay don't be anymore go, go in there and say hey thanks for the invite because then somebody sees you I can't tell you how many friend requests I've got just because I did that and I and I did in the beginning I said you know take me off of this thing how do you how do you get I don't want to be on this you know but then you have to realize that you know we're all being part of a network and uh, and to try to be a little nice about it, it works better um, hootsuite.com and I'm going to end my part with that, is a way you can collectively do all of this social media stuff on one page. It pulls your Facebook up here, your Facebook business page, your Twitter page. It's, it's got a little owl. It's called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E.com, Hootsuite.com. You can schedule. This is what I love about it the most. You can schedule all your posts, put them on a calendar, 
It can be doing them while you're sleeping all week long. And it'll put them on your Facebook page, your Facebook business page, your Facebook group page, whatever you put on there. You can do up to five locations free, then you have to actually subscribe and pay a fee Those for are it. the, to me, the most powerful things you can do for your marketing. 